Omran Mikhail Ivanov was born on January 31, 1900, in a small village in Macedonia. From a very early age, he was keenly aware of the different elements of nature in his environment. The discovery of a spring of fresh water was a special delight, and he spent long hours gazing at it in rapture. Throughout his life, running water would always speak to him of purity. The fire blazing in the fireplace, the fire that gives light and warmth and life, led him gradually to his philosophy of the sun. And then there were the trees, the tall trees which he loved to climb and which awoke in him a passion for mountains. At the age of seven, he experienced the first terrible ordeal when his village was attacked and burned down. He and his mother went to join his father in Bulgaria. But his father's sudden death left them destitute, and throughout his youth he lived in great poverty and extremely difficult social conditions. He was not yet sixteen when, meditating by the sea at sunrise, he experienced ecstasy. This was the crowning point of the spiritual exercises he had practiced with such perseverance since the age of twelve. It was an authentic illumination like those experienced by the Buddha and many great spiritual teachers of humanity. He was seventeen when he first met the spiritual master Petr Donov and became a disciple and a member of his fraternity. With Petr Donov as his guide, he sensed that he was preparing himself in secret for a mission still unknown to him. Continuing his intensive work on the spiritual level, he spent a lot of time in the mountains, but without neglecting his intellectual development. He studied at Sofia University. Later, he was a teacher and then principal of a secondary school. In 1937, Petr Dernov entrusted him with the mission to make his teaching known in France. He arrived in Paris on July 22. Amidst the chaos of World War II, and in spite of constant difficulties caused by his status as a foreigner, he began to give a series of talks which enjoyed considerable success with hundreds of people from all walks of life. As a group of followers gradually formed around him, he gave generously of his time, encouraging and advising all who came to him and helping those in difficulty. Among the many themes he discussed was Sun Yoga, the yoga that has the power to lead human beings on the path of light toward God, the source of all that is. He explained that by contemplating the rising sun in the morning, we can raise ourselves mentally to the highest levels of creation and capture the elements we need to fortify our physical bodies. As his reputation grew, he was soon confronted with jealousy and hostility. In spite of great difficulties, he preserved his integrity and continued his teaching, repeatedly encouraged by the approval of Petr Donov. After terrible ordeals caused by the false accusations brought against him, he returned to his regular program of public talks. He was always available, always ready to offer encouragement and advice to those he called his brothers and sisters. In 1953, his brotherhood held their first annual convention in the south of France at the Bonfin, an arid stretch of land, which, as the years went by, was gradually transformed into a veritable garden. In 1959, while spending a year in India, Omran Mikhail Ivanhoff was given his new name by a very great spiritual master. On several occasions, he spent time with the well-known master Nim Karoli Baba. On his return to France, he resumed his activities with the Brotherhood. The yoga of nutrition was one of the principal themes of his teaching. Food, he said, is a love letter from the Creator. It is capable of preserving the life and renewing the energy, not only of the physical body, but of all our subtle bodies. 
he constantly talked of the Sun Yoga, which is the foundation of his teaching, and of the work of self-transformation. He spoke of light as the water which flows from the sun, the true source of life which contains the seven colors. He spoke too of love, of the creative power of woman, of the two natures in man which need to be harmoniously balanced, of our close bonds with nature, of the importance of meditation and prayer. He explained that our true work consists in the transformation of self. In his last years he made it clear that his spiritual work was for all beings on the planet. Between 1960 and 1986 he traveled widely and met with important public figures as well as many humble people, with politicians, scientists, astronomers, spiritual counselors, mediums and musicians. To all he offered his most precious gifts, his love and wisdom, his enlightened advice. After each journey he returned to France to the company of his fraternity who had come from the four quarters of the world to join him in his spiritual work and be nourished by his teaching. He was like a father to each one, a marvelous guide and educator. He taught them practical methods to use in order to develop their willpower, their joy, their love and their wisdom. On December 25, 1986, he departed this world. His legacy to us is a body of teaching and methods which answer the needs of our times. His unfailing concern was to help each and every individual to achieve spiritual fulfillment while working actively for the realization of a fraternal global community free to live in peace and love.